Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pressures Farm. Today, I want to give a little plug on leasing land uh, versus owning land. And I think for people starting out, uh, especially young folks that don't have a lot of capital, uh, you haven't got a big nest egg saved, or you didn't have a rich a rich aunt that died, um, how are you going to get in the grazing business today? You may have a passion for doing it, just yearning to do it. But how are you going to do it? This is how you do it. You got to find idle land, folks. And there's a lot of it out there. It's hard to get a hold of sometimes, and sometimes it's not. I just had a couple yesterday email me. Uh, they got their first lease, and it's free, 40 acres. And they're just petrified about what to do with it. They're like, oh, my God. You know, they couldn't believe they got it. Then I had a young guy that was disappointed yesterday. He went and, you know, he made the pitch for the to the landowner to get a lease, and he was turned down. Don't, don't get you know uh puzzled by that it's gonna happen i mean i've been turned down on leases too don't don't let that stop you just thank them for their time maybe give them something to read or a, a piece of grass-fed meat and leave you're not going to change their mind if they said they didn't want to lease it to you they're not going to lease it to you go find somebody else the biggest thing that you can do though is on the first visit when you when you visit that landowner you don't, he doesn't know you from adam and he doesn't know anything about you possibly or what your what your deal is don't on the first visit don't go out and ask him if you can lease their farm you're trying to build the relationship first get you know get the guy his name maybe his wife his children just stop by and visit him tell him who you are and where you live that's it you don't need to be talking about you know would you be interested in me putting some cattle on that they may have had a bad experience and that's what happened to this young man Whoever leased the farm before them, the cattle had destroyed his farm. He's like, never again, never again. So he has a bad taste in his mouth. But he went right at him. He, he, he went right at him before he ever built the relationship. Folks, on leasing land, it's, it, you're in the relationship business. You've got to build, you got to build that up. And uh, there's there some people out there that own land that don't know how to do this. And you, And if you don't know how to do this, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of videos, heck, my channel, YouTube channel, you know, I've got a ton of information on there, how to set up a lot of this stuff, the water, the fencing, caring for animals, the right kind of animals, um, but I couldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for lease land. I wouldn't be here talking to you today, because folks, I couldn't have bought all this land. You know, we've got 1,620 acres of that, there's about 700 and some acres of that that's grass, the rest is all timber, brush, and creeks. But we, we do graze some of that other as well. But this, this is where we're making the, the big lion's share of our income. When you can lease the ground, okay, you didn't have to buy it. Every single cent that you put out on a lease, 100% of that is tax deductible. When you buy a land, which is, I'm not saying it's a bad investment. I think it's a great investment if you can pay cash for it. But starting out, I think it's a huge, huge weight to put on your grazing operation, trying to buy enough land to run this many animals. And we got almost 300 head out there, okay? I think to make a living on the land, you've got to be up there somewhere around 150 to 200 cows. I think there's 160, 170 females counting the uh, heifers that we kept back. You've got to have enough animals. You can't go out and take 40 acres and put 100 animals on it. It's just not going to work. Not 100 cows. Now, you could cheat. For every cow that you can put on your farm, you can make that, that one cow is equal five sheep. So let's just say you had 40 acres and you could put 20 pairs on there, 20 cows. Well, take that same 20 and multiply it times five. That's 100 ewes that you could put on there. But you can't keep those same cows on The cows have got to be off. You can't magically get more grass off of a farm than what it'll produce. So in your area, I don't care where you live at, go to your local NRCS station and ask them what their local stocking rate is. In other words, how many cows can you run and how many acres does it take to support one cow for one year? That gives you a benchmark, okay? And then start looking for land. Folks, a lot of these old timers are retiring and they don't want to see houses built on it. They don't have the energy they don't have the health they might have the income they might even be able to help you get started in the cattle business in other words you work for them you get a percentage of the calf crop or whatever but i mean the world's endless out there in opportunities right now in mainstream 
agriculture out here. Everybody's doom and gloom. I don't feel that way at all. But you've got to be an optimist. Don't get disappointed if you get turned down on your first lease. Just don't do that. Just chalk it up. You know, you gave it your best hit. By God, it didn't work out. Go look for your next lease. You're not going to find it out in cropland. You got people from Nebraska all the time. I'm picking on Nebraska, but it could be Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, where you have a lot of cropping going on. You can't pay two to three, four hundred dollars an acre. I'll throw Illinois in there. You can't pay that case rent, not with cattle. You've got to get out here on land that's rolling hills, trees, where the where the row croppers aren't competing with you. Because you can't do that. You're not gonna be able to lease that land. Go out here in the hills where it's not suitable for row cropping, and then you got a chance. Get away from large towns. Get out in the rural community. There's people that own land just for an investment. Those are your prime people we're looking for. I love folks that don't live on the land. Okay, they're vacant. They're living somewhere else. Because then you are the eyes and ears of their land. You're there every day. You're taking care of the land, and you can send them updates what their land looks like. But leasing, check it out. Go to my website, greenpasturefarm.net. I've got a, my first book, No Risk Ranching. That's what it's about. It was called No Risk Ranching, Custom Grazing on Leased Land. I cover all the steps that it took to get to here. Okay, so go check that out. This is Greg Judy signing off. Everyone have a great day.